Hi, Leo. Welcome to your February 2018 astral update. It's Raina here. Well, Leo, as I record this, I am eagerly anticipating the blue moon, lunar eclipse, super moon, blood moon, yada, yada, at 11 degrees of Leo. Um, and this is taking place on January 31st. So for those of you who are watching this a week ahead of time, which is when I'm recording this uh, particular uh, video, you also are having this in your future. As the month of February begins, we're coming off of that eclipse. Now, especially with eclipse, uh, eclipse action, we're talking about energy that may not manifest right away. So it's not like it happens on the 31st and then it's it's done with. So you may be dealing with the aftermath of wh whatever that eclipse means in your life for six months, you know, afterwards. And so the reason I'm even bringing this up is because this is your sign and uh, there's a transformative element with an eclipse. Now with a lunar eclipse, we're talking about full moon, impact. So it could be that something about your life is changing in a dramatic way. And because we're talking about the first house, we're talking about the house of the self. Now this could include your physical appearance, your, your body, it could include the way that you interact with others. I mean, the sky's the limit really about that. But the point is that you may feel like the, a chapter is closing. And I think you're going to like that the chapter is closing. Now, remember, you did have a solar eclipse back last August. And so you have been impacted by these eclipses. So as the month of February begins, um, Mars is in fellow fire sign Sagittarius all month long. This is your fifth house of romance and creativity. And it's interesting because Mars connects to the libido and Leo's, I mean, just think about Mick Jagger. If you want to talk about Leo's and libido, I mean, what is he associated with? So you guys have quite the reputation as um, lovers and the fifth house can be recreational sex. But this may also be just activity involving someone that you're pursuing romantically. Maybe that person is a little bit aloof. Uh, maybe they're playing, um, what do they call that? They're just um, keeping their distance to kind of uh, get you more interested. I can't think of that term. And playing hard to get. There you go. But you're, you may be, um, looking at this person almost like as sport, as something to go after so that you can be the victor. But it can be simply that you're engaged in some kind of physical activity because the fifth house is also sporting, uh, sports and it can be competitive ventures, especially with uh, Mars there. But there's activity. Now, if you're, a, if you're an artist, this can be a very driven time for you where you're, where you're really uh, trying to finish a project or something like that. On the 10th of the month, Venus goes into Pisces. And this is important because for the first 10 days of the month, Venus is going to be in your opposite sign Aquarius in the seventh house of committed partnership. I have a feeling that based on the fact that there was a lunar eclipse last summer in Aquarius, that some of you had, you know, who had long-term relationships may have seen some kind of a a sudden ending to this relationship, but it never really died out. And now you may be back talking to that person and there's a sense of restoration happening because Venus going from that seventh house of partnership where Venus restores harmony 
into the eighth house, which is intimacy, can mean that some people simply had problems in their relationship because they were not really engaging that person at a deep level. They were kind of just going through the motions. If you were married to someone, you may have just taken that person for granted. And maybe you had children and you were playing mommy and daddy and you weren't really nourishing the the marriage itself. Okay. So Venus goes into that eighth house. It's the time of real um, be- beautiful energy for healing the intimacy issues. And also it can bring money, Venus. So with the seventh and eighth houses, we could be talking about inheritance and uh, restoring the peace with Venus in the seventh house when it comes to a court case and then the moolah follows. Okay. And so then there's a, a a new moon in the form of a solar eclipse happening on the 15th of the month in an Aquarius, that opposite sign. So some new beginning with a committed partnership, it could be with the same person, but you're now dealing with that relationship differently maybe more respectfully, maybe more intentionally, okay? And so this can be a new beginning for the two of you. A couple days later, Mercury goes into that eighth house. So we see this pattern. Um, Mercury can also be like contracts. So again, if you have some kind of a settlement And even, you know, you could even say that some people may be getting divorced and they're, you know, getting money from the divorce and signing contracts for that too. The eighth house is other people's money. So it doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's going to be getting along with their um, significant other. You may be getting divorced from that person. But I think that even if you were getting divorced, it would be a smooth, it would be smooth sailing. It wouldn't be like some nasty uh, thing happening. It, Mercury in the eighth house can indicate that you are in talks about things related to um, some kind of uh, money that is coming from another party, and also that your mind is kind of wrapped up in these things. Um, the eighth house, by the way, is also a metaphysical topic, so you may be studying the tarot or astrology or related matters as well. It's a deep time. It's a time for research with um, that Scorpio influence, which the eighth house represents. So speaking of, you know, this eighth house activity, uh, the very next day, the sun in Pisces means that the sun is going into that eighth house. So this may be a time when you are more serious and more quiet Um more scorpionic Leo. So that could ma- mean more tight lip too with Mercury there. And you may just be like in this profound state of uh, consciousness where you are much more interior than you normally are. Um, you're not necessarily socializing as much, although with Mars in the fifth house, I mean, um, the, you rule the fifth house. So, It can be about parties and things like that. So maybe you are doing all of that, but it's almost like a ruse, like you're doing it to throw people off, but really you are in a very contemplative state of mind. Um, Although in Scorpio, talking about that eighth house, it's not so much uh, contemplative um, that we, we would associate with like the 12th house, but more like wanting to, to engage life at a deeper level, you know, not being content with the surface of life. So you could be immersed in conspiracy theories, um, which actually, you know, that's kind of a derisive term. If you think about it, it's, it's actually like they could, it could be the truth. (laughs) You know, a lot of people, the reason that they believe what they believe is because they're too, 
They don't really care about um, whether something is true or not. They're just on automatic. And you may be in a state of mind where you do care. And if for some reason, Leo, you've had uh, some kind of experience with death in your recent past, this will automatically make you more uh, thoughtful about life itself and the meaning of life. And I, I always uh, associate the eighth house with what is the meaning of life. The ninth house to me, it is a philosophical house, but it's more to me the structures of different philosophical beliefs. So organized religion and things like that, rather than the eighth house being the the questions that we ask about uh, the meaning of things, the meaning behind things. So, um, yeah, so it, it can be, it may be a month where you're really digging deep and that's wonderful, Leo. That's a, that's a good thing for us all to do. And we do have these times when we are not uh, easily amused and this may be one of them. And that's, that's, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But I think the takeaway from February for Leo is that somehow the other kind of plays a role. So whether this is a romantic partner or whether this is a business partnership, because the seventh house can be your business partnerships as well, is that there will be new understanding and maybe new agreements that benefit both of you. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this Leo and enjoy that so uh, lunar eclipse in your sign, that transformative energy. If you'd like a personal reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, have an awesome uh, February. Bye.